So sir, uh, as a cardiovascular disease segment, you must be knowing that uh, the prevention, always now we as a, uh, as a consultant, we are also promoting that the prevention is always better than the cure for any kind of the disease. So now there is a concept of prevention of any kind of the cardiovascular disease like myocardial infarction, atrial fibrillation, then prevention of stroke in atrial fibrillation. So there is various concept is going on. So sir, what's your key, uh, key messages on this particular concept that how we can drive for the betterment of society in India? Yeah, as you have rightly pointed out, the basic crux should be on prevention because we cannot treat, the, the treatment is very costly treatment, the morbidity, mortality is higher. So uh, unless we prevent the disease right from its inception, we are not going to address this cardio, a huge burden of coronary vascular disease and arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation. So uh, we have to start uh, lifestyle changes right from the beginning to prevent the cardiac diseases. Okay. And sir, as an interventional part, uh, definitely you have the many patients on the acute coronary syndrome and sometimes the, the stroke patient is also uh, comes in your practice. So these both are the very devastating conditions and they may impact the life of the patient. So how you have observed that these both the conditions, though it's not comparable, but if they are going to impact a life, then up to what level they can impact the life of the patients? Actually, uh, if we compare the acute coronary syndrome versus stroke, stroke is more debilitating and uh, stroke is devastating for the family. The person in his youth becomes uh, bedridden, he is not able to perform, he is not able to earn. While in acute coronary syndrome, you can revascularize the patient and he goes back to his work uh, very fast. So the livelihood lost in a stroke are much more and they impact more in a family economically than in acute coronary syndromes. Perfect. So definitely the stroke, definitely ACS, the incidence rate is very, very high, but again, the, the, the lifetime cost of the stroke is much, much higher than the acute coronary syndrome. The quality of life in the yeah. stroke, stroke is worse than, worse than the, the acute, acute coronary syndrome, surely. So, uh, so, so that's why the in atrial fibrillation, which is the, uh, in which the stroke is one of the major complications you have found. So regarding the stroke prevention atrial fibrillation, that since so far the many drugs has been come around the, from the starting of aspirin then vitamin k antagonist and now the newer generation of drugs is also as well so what uh, your experience on this all three generation of the drugs from st if we start from the warfarin then aspirin and then noex so what is your experience and how this drugs has changed your practice also in this particular segment traditionally when we treat uh, atrial fibrillation we have two goals uh, uh, one is uh, rate, rate and rhythm control and second most important is the prevention of a stroke. Now uh, people die from atrial fibrillation not by any arrhythmia but by stroke by, by because of the and in, if we leave this atrial fibrillation untreated there are 3 to 4 percent of these people have stroke. So it is our uh, uh, duty to prevent this treatable cause of a stroke which is atrial fibrillation and uh, if we see the arrhythmias uh, in arrhythmias atrial fibrillation is the one of the commonest arrhythmias uh, in population and as the age advances as the risk factors high blood pressure diabetes they and uh, obesity uh, increases the incidence of atrial fibrillation and so the incidence of stroke increases in the population okay so uh, if we uh, if we talk about the treatment management part so um, you must have used the many, many, uh, many times the vitamin K antagonists like warfarin, acinocumerol. Still, they are gold standard agents. But are they very? Uh, definitely, they are useful drugs. But how the uh, smoothly that this drug can be used? Yeah. So far, uh, we uh, majority of population of atrial fibrillation depends upon vitamin K antagonists, uh, warfarin, uh, acitrom. But the, uh, the biggest drawback of them. Is, is a very low uh, narrow therapeutic index uh, the window. So the toxicity levels are, uh, they develop very fast if we don't measure the uh, INR values. The INR value has to be kept in a very, uh, very narrow window of between two and three. If the INR goes below two, that there are chances of ischemic stroke. If it is goes uh, beyond three, then the chances of bleeding are higher. To maintain that INR in two, between two to uh, three, the person has to go repeated INR levels, which in our country is uh, is very very difficult. People are in from remote areas, villages. The INR facilities are not available. 
then there are a lot of individual variabilities from lab to lab. Uh, same sample given at two different labs will give us different INR values. So person would be confused what to do with the uh, warfarin uh, doses. So uh, plus this uh, vitamin K antagonists, they have a lot of interactions with food. Uh, we, when we prescribe these, we impose a lot of restrictions on the diet of the patient like uh, all vitamin K containing food should be avoided like uh, green leafy vegetables, citrus fruits, so which makes the life of patient or diet of the patient very unpalatable. So that is the reason uh, these vitamin K antagonists have, there is a need for a newer alternative which is safer, which doesn't require INR monitoring and which has less interactions with the diet as well as other drugs. So, sir has rightly mentioned that the older generation molecules are there, definitely they are gold standard, but now there is a need of their improvement in this particular group of the drugs as well. So, sir, you have talked about the newer generation of oral anticoagulants, NOAX group. So, these are the, these drugs are available in India almost since last 5 to 6 years. As of now, the Dabigatran, and Rivaroxaban and Epixaban, one by one they have launched in India also as well. So, what is your experience in, with these all three molecules? Yeah, the, it started with the after the rely data when the dabigatran was launched. Now it was launched in two doses, 110 and 150. But the disadvantage of dabigatran was that it had to be given twice daily doses. Then it came to be very very expensive. So whenever the number of tablets are increasing per day by the patient, then the compliance goes down. So, our aim as a clinician is to reduce the number of tablets consumed by the patient per day. That is how the concept of polypill was also launched. So, if we have uh, an OAC which is single daily dose, then that scores over a double daily dose uh, of uh, an OAC. That is where the uh, dabigatran uh, scored less than other newer anticoagulants which are single dose. Okay. And so this is the last one that as an interventional cardiologist, definitely the ACS is uh, always the maximum number of the patient that you are going to treat. But when the dual morbidity coming, for example, ACS along with the at uh, atrial fibrillation and you have to stop the recurrent MI events and also you have to stop the uh, stroke in that particular AF patient. So how will you go ahead? Uh, along with DAPD that is the use of oral anticoagulants. So how will you manage this kind of the patients? Now this is a very good question in fact uh, because we get a lot of patients who require stenting as well as they are on atrial fibrillation. Now uh, we have to prevent the ischemic episode and we have to balance the increased risk of bleeding also. Now uh, we cannot stop the dual antiplatelet uh, thenoparadines and uh, aspirin. But uh, in addition to prevent the stroke, because thenoparadine alone cannot prevent the stroke from atrial fibrillation. So the only NOAC which is uh, approved uh, and proven is a rivaroxaban, uh, while dabigatran when added to dual antiplatelet uh, or apixaban when added to uh, dual antiplatelet, they increase the bleeding. While rivaroxaban in single daily dose uh, has proven that if we add to the dual antiplatelets, then uh, it doesn't increase the bleeding, uh, but it reduces the stroke risk. So, Dabigat, this uh, rivaroxaban can, in a single daily dose can be sa safely combined with dual antiplatelets to prevent stroke in patients who are undergoing a PCI. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Chandra has said very well and very crisp and in very practical uh, aspects of regarding the stroke prevention and atrial fibrillation. AF is definitely is a, uh, one of the commonest arrhythmic disorder, but the complication of AF, the stroke, it is always worst as compared to the acute coronary syndrome because we, it, it can impact a patient for a lifetime with disabilities. And if we, uh, and uh, as by his suggestion that uh, the treat management of the stroke prevention in AF from the oral anticoagulants, vitamin K antagonists are available, but they have some practical issues like the INR monitoring and uh, drug drug interaction and the uh, poor compliance for the longer time of management. And in compare of that, the NOEX, they can provide the solution on these two part uh, these three particular points. And, uh, and as in a cardiologist, interventional cardiologist, definitely the when the ACS and AF, when these two diseases come in single patient, then how we can go ahead with the Rivaroxaban along with the DAPT. So that is a very valuable suggestion from him. So with this note, sir, we are ending our discussion. 
थैंक्स लॉर्ड सर फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग वैल्यूअल ओपिनियन